Dead Space is back, but the greatest horror that is the VRS, it seems, with chunky pixels as big as your face and the lights whacked up to the sun. Yes, the image across all formats did have some issues before and at launch, but now the team have reacted very quickly, yesterday releasing a patch for PS5 and PC to aid the variability of the IQ. Is it a success? And how bad was it really? Now this is a follow up to the just released patch from Motive with its excellent remake of Dead Space and if you're looking to learn more about the technology, the improvements over the original, how it runs on everything from the Steam Deck to PlayStation 5 then go and check my full performance review up over the weekend on IGN. Now one issue I noted in that is the game's reliance on variable rate shading and how it impacts the image across all formats. Now this can be worse the lower the resolution and the PlayStation 5 can also suffer worse over the Series X in certain points. But one thing I want to call out is the analysis I have seen online. It has the game's brightness whacked up to 100 and that is not how the game was designed at all. And if you do this, then all the issues I cover in this video will be worse or at least you'll see them at their worst here. So pro tip, if you need it, if you're playing a dark, moody horror game, don't bring the 1000 watt spotlights to enjoy it. Now the reason I mention this is the fact that an analysis needs to take into account all aspects and most of all, be consistent as the pros and cons for each format, the team's aims, the scope of the game and all hardware, etc, etc. And I do see a lot of tests that just don't do that. So for example, yes, you can see here the PlayStation 5 has a terrible edging artifact around a lot of surfaces and edges. But the Series X has much softer details with writing and materials looking far worse at certain points in the PS5, which looks sharper. So there's definitely pros and cons for both, but it definitely can stand out in terms of the dithering effect that happens on the Series X far less than it does on the PlayStation 5 with VRS engaged. So with that said, what I can show you what the team would have been balancing here when the game is set to 45-55 brightness range, as they would have intended by design, then the issues are much harder to spot. Not always, but certainly far less egregious than when you open the blinds to the sun, as here and in some reviews that I've seen. Now with the PS5 being the most affected on the overall shading rate due to it running a software VRS tier 1 solution and this then limits the granularity of the shading rates it can hit across the frame with it often looking like the worst motion blur or checkerboard artifacts you've ever seen which is not unexpected as VRS is really very similar to checkerboard in that it will reduce the pixel shading rate to effectively merge every second pixel high to be the result of one pixel sample or two wides to be the result of one or both, resulting in one sample per four pixel grid. Now this is the hard limit of tier one, which is the one the PS5 and non-Turing RDNA GPUs will be stuck at. In addition, you're limited by the draw rate here as well, which is where tier two comes into effect. One which my RTX 2070 here fully supports, as does the Series X and the Series S. Effectively, you can now take a screen space texture and that can be used by the previous frame and in an 8x8 or 16x6 rendering grid, different shading rates can be applied on each rather than per draw, just like tier 1. In addition, the pixel sample size can also be higher than tier 1 with 2x4, 4x2 and even 4x4 sample rates and a higher level of control and reduced fallbacks. This does not mean though the PS5 cannot implement such a solution as even the PS4 has a version of VRS which was used heavily in PSVR titles and has been updated with PS5 to be used in forthcoming PSVR 2 HMD games. I cover this a lot with my Resident Evil PSVR review. And in addition, software solutions have been used even in the last and current generation with Call of Duty from Michael Drobert citing its software based solution that ran on the Xbox One and PS4 could actually offer better better performance due to the hardware customizations being locked and the software one having a higher level of options and this was shipped in that 2019's Modern Warfare title. But at the end of the day development is not one single solution and teams will not always be able to implement different solutions from all platforms and or from different vendors. And with Frostbite being a PC engine first and the DirectX 12U supporting Tier 1 and Tier 2, it makes perfect sense that from a development sense at least, that they would choose VRS here across all. Effectively, RTX Turing onwards and AMD RDNA 1 GPUs and both Series X and S will support Tier 2 and then older PCs and PS5 can fall back to Tier 1. 
but the implementation here is the main issue, with the solution being a bit heavy handed and in addition, due to the game's use of FSR2 reconstruction along with DRS scaling, we now have three levels of resolution scaling going on and as such this does not always play nice, as I mentioned in my IGM review. At a high level, with VRS being a raster based solution within the ROP pipeline stage, then anything that is compute based on the GPU for example, say particles or voxel fog volumes, they cannot be included in either tier 1 or tier 2, and would therefore need to be managed as a separate update within the compute shader itself. What this means is the benefit from VRS tier 2 is already ok to good. Even from Microsoft's own reports with Gears 5 development blog stating that around 14% was the best they saw with the quality match option and 20% when moving to the more aggressive performance mode. This means that the benefits on this game, certainly in the ray tracing mode as I call it, may be very small and possibly not worth the impact on IQ as dynamic resolution scaling and FSR2 or DLSS are already carrying the heavy load. Now using my RTX 2070 with both DLSS and FSR2 engaged, we can see that the new update now allows us to turn VRS off. This wasn't present at launch or in review code. And by turning it on and off, I saw no difference in performance in this scene, but IQ does improve with it off. And this is set at ultra settings, everything on max. So without reconstruction enabled, so at this point 1800p TAA, again at ultra settings, we see a very small 3% performance increase at best, which is safe to say on this machine, simply not a good use of resource saving. Now there might be other edge cases in the title that see a little more, so let's double that to 6. Now bearing in mind going from 1800p TAA to 1800p FSR2 quality, we get 53% performance uplift and a slightly smaller 50% from DLSS quality. So more than worth it as suspected and negates the need for VRS here. Also, if you turn off VRS and DRS and engage these, the image quality is practically the same as TAA at this point. Now with VRS engaged and 1800p TAA, the image quality isn't too bad. But with it engaged, it looks far worse, even now. So it reinforces the fact that these, all these three combined, as I covered, they just don't play well nice together in this implementation. So if you are using one, turn the other off. Now, along with this new update, they do to appear have also improved the sharpening pass in FSR2, and it's now closer to DLSS2. Although DLSS2 just pips it in reality, they're now close enough to be the same with a small performance uptick in FSR2's favour. Although FSR 2.1 may improve on the quality, the solution here is good both in static and in motion compared to DLSS and TAA and therefore all three of them really look pretty good now once you have VRS disabled. So my first takeaway here is that VRS was possibly overkill, as a forced inclusion at least for most mid to high end cards, and I would assume that is going to be absolutely true for PS5 and Series X, which is where it is going to be shipping on only. Now bearing in mind that these two consoles are more powerful than this card, and at launch the ray trace mode was already unlocked, running up to 60 FPS on both, but often in the middle ground of 40 to 50 FPS. Again, see my IGM review for more detail on this. That said, adding it was the correct thing to do as low-end hardware such as the Steam Deck or weaker 4 or 5 year old GPUs could benefit far more with it on, although the Steam Deck does have it as an override. And this is what I suspected at the time with my IGM review, in that DRS and FSR2 were sufficient 
and I suspect the Xbox consoles will follow suit, with VRS being disabled, or at least on Series X at worst. So the next question then is, does this affect performance? Well, no, is a simple answer, but let's extend on that. So we now know that the PS5 has VRS disabled in both modes. So performance and RT modes no longer run VRS at all. And it's capped now also at 30 FPS on both in that RT mode. But we do know that we have at least 50% headroom left over in the GPU. As such, VRS at best, based on what we've just covered, could only be offering 14% improvement. And the IQ is worse for it on all consoles and PC. So based on the actual game here and outputs, I would suggest it's really offering a 5% boost at best. And using the disc code, we can see that the PS5 in that ray tracing mode is above 10% of that 30 FPS cap engaged at worst. So VRS at worst case likely would not cause this to drop below 30. And even before this update, the real-time cinematics disable VRS anyway. So the headroom is more than enough. Luckily, the team have updated the PS5 version here and the Xbox Series X and Series S consoles are coming soon. And we now see that as expected, the headroom in both performance and RT mode is more than sufficient for VRS to not be required. And in these side by sides, you can see the stark improvement it can offer in like for like sections. Again though, I must stress the correct brightness and gamma the developers intended this game to be shown at. It's not as obvious as I'm making it here. And as an example, here is the old VRS version, again set correctly, and as you can see, the difference is not as large. Yes, you can see it, but it certainly doesn't stand out as much as when you whack the brightness up. And performance mode is also the same, close to lock 60 FPS all the time, and with the game supporting VRR, if you can notice these single dips here and there, it's fully resolved with VRR. Now, I hope I'm not spoiling too much here by stating I fully expect the Xbox consoles to benefit the same and also not lose any performance. So great work all round by Motive and excellent to see that in around four days they have fixed it and offered an even better package than I covered. The only issue that remains now is to solve the PC stutters that still crop up again all covered in my IGM review but a high level version is the console versions are silky smooth when moving around the Ishimura and never stutter or at the least only a frame here or there whereas the PC version due to the vastly different architecture and the high memory management and SSD demands the game has it can stutter quite heavily at points and even running at 120 FPS plus won't resolve the issue, as all three of my tested hardware here with the very best and most powerful in the AMD RX 6800, paired with a Zen 3 5600X at 4.8GHz and a 3.2GB per second NVMe SSD, can still stutter. When going around the ship, the seeking and data swaps occur, and these are just repeatable, they're nothing to do with DX12 shader compilation. My weaker RTX 2070 card paired with an SSD and a weaker CPU can suffer far more, but far and away the worst is the Steam Deck. But Valve have released a patch in addition to this one, and I'm told it has improved, but I didn't have time to test it properly for this video, as I literally covered this quickly last night and I've edited this together now, but it still suffers from my quick check, but don't take that as gospel. And to wrap up my coverage here, I also want to stress that I do think people make big deals, certainly bigger channels, that they shouldn't do about issues like this. The team delivered an excellent remake, remaster, call it what you want. It's not significantly different in terms of playthrough, but it does have enough passion and energy in it to make it more excitable to play if you've played the original. And if you haven't played the original, it's definitely the best place to play it because you don't ruin much of the original title itself. So all of that is great, but the image quality issues were there and having options in the menu absolutely but we also need to take into account that when you are 
at the sharp end of analyzing graphics and hardware, like I am, so I'm as guilty of it as anybody else, you have to also balance that with the average everyday player. And I try not to create drama. I'm going to use the word drama because a lot of this does feel like I've got nothing else to talk about, so I'll create a big situation. This was never as bad as it appeared online. Um, it definitely had issues, and like I've covered here, there's points where the Series X can look worse than the PS5, and yet the general consensus online is Series X and Series S are perfect, PS5 is ruined. Absolutely not true at all, as I've covered here and in my other review. So just be aware that even though this is a great update, and I'm very happy that VRS is in there, as I don't see a huge demand for VRS in 2D titles like this, VRS was designed first and foremost for virtual reality. It makes sense there, along with favated rendering. All of that is where it makes benefits, or you don't have any other reconstruction going on and you use it in place of it. But if you merge the two, you're better off picking one because you've basically got two solutions stacked on top. And that rarely works very well as we've seen here. So again, great that it's fixed, wasn't perfect, certainly wasn't the end of the world, doesn't ruin the title. I hope that all makes sense. Anyway, that's it. I'm out. But remember, I am completely self-funded and independent. If you like what I do here, please do share, like, some support on Patreon, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. Because uh, unfortunately, if people don't share my work, it just doesn't get viewed. And YouTube just isn't my biggest friend in terms of the algorithm. So anything you can do to help by sharing, by commenting down below, by giving it a thumbs up, um, even give it a thumbs down if you don't like it and tell me what you don't like about it. All those things help. But fundamentally, it's always good to get as Bob Oskin said, it's always good to talk. Anyway, I'm waffling too far. You guys and girls take care. I'll catch you on the next one.